Tonight, did top IRS official Lois Lerner outsmart Congress? Now, she took the fifth, but only after getting out her own message. I have not done anything wrong. I have not broken any laws. I have not violated any IRS rules or regulations, and I have not provided false information to this or any other congressional committee. I've been advised by my counsel to assert my constitutional right not to testify or answer questions related to the subject matter of this hearing. She just testified. She just waived her Fifth Amendment right to privilege. You don't get to tell your side of the story and then not be subjected to cross-examination. That's not the way it works. She waived her right to Fifth Amendment privilege by, by issuing an opening statement. She ought to stand here and answer our questions. Sir, you misled Congress. You misled Congress. Make no question about it. You told us one thing, when you learned, when you learned that our suspicions were true, when you learned that there was a list, you did nothing. You sure you didn't talk to anyone at the White House about this issue, Mr. Shulman? About singling out conservative groups uh, for special scrutiny? Well, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? I'm absolutely sure I did not talk to anyone. 118 at, visits, at the... it didn't come up in a casual conversation after 132 members of Congress contacted you about it. You sure you didn't bring it up with anybody at the White House? Um, the Easter egg roll with my kids. Well, um, a question about the administrability um, of uh, tax policy right. they were thinking of. You've never had any conversation with respect to this subject, the subject of this hearing, with anybody at the White House, though you were at the White House 118 times. Is um, that? Yeah, I mean, just so I'm, just so I'm clear, I have no memory. Um, would have been appropriate. Did you do anything to verify that the practice, as insidious as it was, was stopped? Um, the uh, inspector general was going to be looking into it, and that's what. Is it that you can't say yes or no, or you're just choosing not to say yes or no? Can you answer the question? Did you do anything personally to make sure that this insidious, discriminatory practice was stopped? Um, yes or no? In all the scandals, we hear the same thing from time after time by the government officials that are involved. Benghazi, IRS, AP reporters, Fast and Furious. Time after time, we're hearing people, wasn't my job, I don't know, was the other office, I was recused. I didn't find out about it until you found out about it. Where does the accountability begin? Congressman Trey Gowdy is not holding back. He says top IRS official Lois Lerner can't have it both ways. Congressman Gowdy joins us. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay, so she makes a statement. She takes an oath. She makes a statement. And then she says she's asserting her fifth. And you say it's a waiver? That she can't do that? I think you have a great argument under Brown versus U.S. that it is a waiver. I mean, if you could do it the way she wants to do it, then every defendant would come say, I didn't rob the bank, and I'm not going to answer the prosecutor's questions. And that's not the best way calculated to get out the truth, which is what we want to do. So we'd all in life like to get out our version without having to answer anyone else's questions. It's just not fair. And, and I don't think it's legal, and that's the reason I raised it with Chairman Issa. You know, I've gone back and forth all day long, whether you're right or wrong, you're right or you're wrong. And then it occurred to me that this is probably one of the dumbest things that she could have done. And her lawyer, who I know probably advised, because you think about it, is that all she had to do was to go in there, take the fifth, leave the building, and she could have said the same thing on the steps of the United States Capitol. Everyone in the media would have followed it. We would have all been replaying it. And then she wouldn't be in this position where you guys are thinking about going to court to compel her to testify as a waiver. That or have her lawyer read her statement or post it on Facebook. She had a lot of options, but she didn't choose any of those. She came, as you noted, to our committee hearing under subpoena, took the oath. It, it, she had already warned us she might invoke, and then she testified. I mean, what she did was testimony. So w my question to Chairman Issa is, uh, when do we get our chance? You say you didn't lie to Congress. You say you didn't break any IRS rules. Let us decide that. Let us ask you some questions. I, you know, Chairman Issa's got a couple of different options uh, at his disposal, one of which is to bring her back tomorrow. I promise you, Greta, if she comes back tomorrow, she will invoke. 
which then will set up a contempt analysis. Well, but, but, I mean, why not? I mean, like, she's going to come back and take the fifth. She's already taken the fifth. She's, she's taken the oath. She's made a statement. And I think what, what puts her at huge risk is not the thing where she says, I've not done anything wrong or I've not broken any laws, but when she says, and I have not provided false information to this or any other congressional committee. So it goes beyond just simply a denial. I didn't do it. It's not like she walked into the police station and says, I hate you police officers. You say I ran over the cat with the truck, but I'm not talking. I'm taking the fifth and I'm walking out. It's, that's, I mean, this is very different. Well, she was very clear about it. it, it and I, it, go back a couple of weeks. Jimmy Jordan, who's a great congressman from Ohio, set out that he thought that she had misled Congress. And Bustani and Paul Ryan and others in the Ways and Means Committee made it pretty clear they thought she had misled or lied to Congress. We would not have any trouble proving that. Uh, can we prove it beyond a reasonable doubt? I don't know. Can we prove it in the court of public opinion? Absolutely, with letters and a failure to keep us up to date. So I, I understand why she wants to get out there that she didn't lie to Congress. It, it's just... You know, but, it, I, I, but no, I understand it too. It's like, but what I don't get is that... I mean, I don't even know whether you're going to win or lose if you take this to court. What I don't get, and maybe it's the lawyer in me, is that why her lawyer put her in such a position where we're debating it, where a judge may be deciding it, when he could achieve the same thing without any risk at all? Um, I was never a criminal defense attorney. I was never smart enough to do that. But I would never let my client have opened his or her mouth. It, there are too many other ways. You've noted some. Just go on the steps afterward. Have your lawyer read your statement. She uh, did the one act that most complicates uh, her from a legal uh, jeopardy standpoint. All right. Does the committee have the stomach, though, to go to court and try to compel this? You know what? It, it depends on whether or not we have the stomach to want to answer the questions. You know, one of the other questions today was give me a single name of a single person who is part of this conspiracy to target. I don't know a name. I don't think you know a name. So if we're serious about finding out how this started and how it went for 18 months, uh, then we're going to need to talk to her. You know, but but you, I mean, you really need to sort of accelerate this. I mean, you know, with all due respect to Congress, you have oversight, but you don't really do a lot of oversight. What you do is you wait for something horrible to happen and then you investigate. I mean, this has been going on. A lot of Americans have been hurt because they're terrified of the IRS. A lot of them, you know, these conservative groups. So, you know, you really could put your, your foot to the pedal and really accelerate this. Either, you know, either go after her and see, see if you can compel her testimony or give it a rest. Well, I would also say, in addition to public hearings, we do depositions. In fact, we did one today. And, and those aren't glamorous, and they're not always known by the public. But uh, oversight staff is pursuing this. Uh, Mr. Lynch from Massachusetts, who's a colleague on the other side of the aisle, also mentioned the word special prosecutor today. This may be one of those instances, so long as you can have a grand jury and access to subpoena power, and the compulsion of, of, of process, this may be a case where you want to look at a special prosecutor. All right, Mr. Shulman, um, former commissioner, said that uh, he was at the, IRA, uh, at the White House 118 times, mentioned even the Easter egg rule. Um, were you satisfied with his answers that he was, you know, giving you the best of his recollection, he's playing it straight, or do you think he was dodging? Uh, choice B, uh, dodging. I can't tell you a single straight answer he gave. I, and some of the questions weren't complicated. Uh, what did you do when you learned that targeting was going on, which maybe is criminal, what did you do? I, I, I listened to him for four and a half hours and he didn't give a straight answer once he identified who he was and what his title was. He doesn't know how many times he was at the White House, but I can tell you this, Greg, 118 is more than some of the employees at the White House were there. It's, so that's a lot. Does he, do you know who he was talking to? I suppose not at the White House, but I suppose a lot of people, he's at the Easter Bunny. Uh, well, he said the Office of, of Budget Management. Um, I, we don't know, and to be honest with you, after listening to him for four and a half hours, I'm not sure I would have believed the answer anyway. One last question. Did he know the targeting was going on? Uh, yes. And he, and he did nothing? Uh, oh, no. He, his defense is, I told the Inspector General about it, because he's incapable of doing anything other than telling an Inspector General who was doing an audit, not even an investigation. He had nothing that he couldn't do anything about uh, it? He could have done a lot about it, but, but his... All, all I heard today was, yes, I told the Inspector General. And that's the extent and of so his the moral of duty. The yes. rest of it is nothing. Look the other way. Congressman, it'll be interesting to see what you all do. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.